Welcome to A Friday Reads, where I talk about what I read, what I'm reading, what I hope to get to next. I have a road trip coming up that'll have much audiobook time, so we're going to discuss that audiobook TBR at the end of this video, because um, since I can't go home for Thanksgiving, I'm going home for the Veterans Day long weekend, which means I'm filming this a day early, but I've also had an oddly productive reading month already because of audiobooks. So yeah, let's get into it. First, what I have finished. I finished Wayward because um, I'm trying to read books that I think will be on the long list, short list for the Goodreads Choice Awards. And this is in a lot of book boxes. It has it's been on a lot of shelves. It has a lot of crossover appeal for people who don't read fantasy. And I guess for people who do read fantasy. And so I read it. Now, full disclosure, if I wasn't doing this project, I would not have picked this book up. It didn't seem like a book for me. Um, and I don't know how to describe that other than it seemed like a book that was going to tackle why the patriarchy is bad and how it affects people. And in general, I've read a lot of books like that. And I don't find a lot of catharsis in that or usually the way they are portrayed. Um, and usually I like books that tackle more the system than the individual stories that people have to overcome. Because I, I don't know, that's just me and my taste. It's just a taste thing. So knowing that this book's about women being wronged was a little hesitant. Um, but you know, three perspectives. Why are they in this story? That could have been interesting, right? Like that's kind of the whole like fifth season thing. Like who are these three perspectives? Um, I will say, and I won't bring up how they're connected. It's, it's very obvious very early why we're following these three women from these three different points in time. I actually don't even know if it's on the back of the book, but it shouldn't be a secret because it's so obvious. But regardless, we follow these three women at three different points in time. They all have this kind of nature connection and we get to see them having to fight the patriarchy and the different wrongs it does to them and their families. And it kind of goes the way you would expect. There was something terribly surprising, which isn't a bad thing. I just, I just felt really sad most of the time and I wasn't actually really connected that often. And everything, like I said, went the way I kind of expected. Like it wasn't bad. The audiobook was nice. It was fine. Um, so that's, I think that's where I'm at. It's like, this is a good version of what it is. I kind of wish that if we were going to do an interconnected perspectives plot, it was, I don't know, it's weird to say a little more gimmicky. Like this was super straightforward. Um, we have one perspective from someone in the 1600s. We have someone from the 1940s and then we have a contemporary modern day woman. Um, the one in the 1600s is dealing with a witch trial. Also, I think all these take place in the United Kingdom somewhere. I think. They're, none of them are in the United States. <laughs> it's basically because I feel like if I say witch trials, everyone's going to think Salem. It's like, no, it's not. It's not in New England. It's in England, I think. Again, I don't know exactly the geography. I'm sure I was told. I've forgotten. But it's also important because there's like a Viscount and we don't have those here. Um, so anyways, we have the 1600s woman. She's on her witch trials. Hers was like, I think the most interesting because it was the most nonlinear storytelling. Um, then we in the middle, I think her name is Violet. Could be wrong. Could be the fourth wing hype. Who knows? Um, it's the 1940s. She is the daughter of a Viscount. Her, she's always known her mother was a bit odd. And she has this weird connection to nature that she's starting to learn is not normal. Like, I guess, you know, she doesn't realize that people don't like to save spiders and stuff like that. And she, you meet her when she's trying to make herself presentable enough so she doesn't get sent to boarding school for her cousin. And um, angry men suck energy happen in that part of the book. And then at the end of the book, well, it's not the end, but the more modern day is this woman who we just start the jump. Her life sucks. She's leaving an abusive marriage while pregnant. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of men suck energy, which is not my favorite way of approaching the patriarchy sucks. Because yes, of course, men can suck. Women can suck. And yes, men are able to suck at larger levels because of the system of patriarchy. But for me, it's just not a cathartic thought experiment. And usually the stories themselves aren't that like they're not bad like this was not a bad reading experience but it wasn't great either and I think part of it is that I f it felt samey it's like yes of course this horrible thing is going to happen to this character now of course <sighs> and so I don't know if I'm really expressing why this type of thing burns me out in either literary historical fantasy wherever whatever genre it's put in but it's okay and I read it um the audiobook like I said pretty good uh the next one I read is Atalanta so Greek retelling. I hadn't read a Greek retelling by this author yet. And based on how I felt about this was going to tell me if I was going to read Ariadne or Electra or anything like that. Um, this was also fine. It was fine. <laughs> it actually, it wasn't till the very end of the story that I remembered Atalanta because I, I used to really love Greek mythology. Like I feel like everyone does. Um, and actually my ninth grade poster project was on Atalanta. I'm remembering now because I drew a lion. Um, if you don't know Atalanta's myth, it ends in a lion. Um, 
So, like, it wasn't until that point that I remembered her story because, like, the whole point of these projects is they kind of embellish people who have smaller roles who are typically women because the patriarchy, there's a lot of the patriarchy sucks energy in this book, too. But it's not, like, quite as much the focus, or at least I just know that that comes with Greek stories because Greeks, Greek mythology is very, like, women are scary. <laughs> like, there's a deep fear of women, and especially a woman like Analanta who can, like, hold it hurled her own and be faster and stronger than some men around her yeah um and i mean i also don't love um i think she's a part of the getting the golden fleece story i can't remember the name of the ship right now but with jason and that's not my favorite story to begin with because it's it's so fetch quest and like it's it's a lot like the odyssey too it's like and then they have to go to this island this thing happens and then this thing happens and there are trials and there's more you know it's not my favorite version of a greek story either so i had a couple things going against it because i just read a patriarchy sucks story and now we're in another patriarchy sucks story and i mean i for the record i agree the patriarchy sucks okay <laughs> but does it need to be in all these popular fantasy books i don't know um but I did, like, Atalanta grew on me, and I actually did like where her story went and how she fought to make her own path, because unlike, I think, Wayward, this had patriarchy sucks, but also maybe matriarchy's not the right way either energy, and I kind of liked the balance there, because Atalanta's raised by Artemis in the forest with the nymphs, and you kind of see how Artemis is, and you definitely get the how gods and goddesses are cruel sort of things that you get with the Olympians, and so you you have this character who's honestly just trying to find her own agency and freedom among all of these powerful men and women so I felt like there was some balance there um I never felt like she had to sacrifice too much because of the patriarchy which was kind of nice but again it was just kind of fine it was definitely one of those audiobooks that I just put on three times speed and I was just able to go it wasn't too long though didn't overstay its welcome so it has that going for it Next thing we'll talk about is my physical read. It's I'm halfway through it, and that is Fool's Quest, the second book in the Fits and the Fool, last trilogy currently of The Realm of the Elderling. And um, I'm really liking this book. I really am. But I will say that Robin Hobb and I, we're, we're, having, we're having a fight right now. And I'm finally over the fight because <laughs> rev resolutions have finally happened. Like, I'm used to being mad at characters Robin Hobb makes because they're meant to be unlikable. I'm used to that. And I'm used to her characters that we even do like doing dumb things or having characterizations that frustrate me because of plot stuff. What I'm not as used to is her purposefully setting scenes up in a way that I find transparent to be like, ha ha ha, you the reader know things that they don't. And I'm not going to let them know the things that you know until I want to as the author, not because it makes sense. And I'm going to play with you. I'm going to tease you like, you know, like, I, I don't know, like a cat with a laser pointer. And... It, it, it did frustrate me. I spent 700 pages or so incredibly frustrated with this little song and dance she was playing with me. I think I'm over it now. And like, obviously the highs are still so high. <laughs> like there is still so many things that she does incredibly well. But um, this is like my, I hate the miscommunication trope. It's not the miscommunication trope. It's the author won't let the communication happen trope for reasons that don't make sense. And also just plays with my emotions on purpose. Like I just felt like the author was cackling. And I don't want to hear the author cackle. I don't want to... I know authors do that. I know when authors write certain scenes, like, oh, they're going to hate this. I don't want to notice. And that's the thing. I think I was noticing the craft in, like, a negative way for myself. But that said, uh, things are happening. I'm still liking Fitz more than I have in the past, so that's really cool. And the lore of the Realm of the Elderlings is still just so interesting and continues to be so because it is kind of like our world of the universe where there's grounding, there are things we understand, but there are so many mysteries and that's really fun. So that's what I'm doing. I need a new audiobook and tomorrow, like I said, I got a lot of driving time. So what's on my short list there? All right, so I've got Vampires of El Norte, which even though it's for no project other than I want to read it, I think I'm going to because I really loved listening to the Hacienda, so I'd love to listen to this, um, even though, like, I, I think it's going to be, if it's on a short list, on the horror one, which I, you know, Goodreads, which would be cool, but that doesn't help me with the fantasy. On the fantasy side, I do think I finally have the new V.E. Schwab on audio, so that could be something that I listen to. I think I could listen to that, okay? I know the world kind of well enough. I listened to Wheel of Time on audio, so I think I could do it. Like, I think I could manage it, even though it's been, like, four years, five years since I've read <laughs> the first trilogy, but I think I could do it. And then I do have the new Chloe, um, I think it's Chloe Gong book. It's, 
I can't remember what it is. You guys have the cover. I don't know if this will make the list because it's been getting pretty low ratings, but I do have it. So those are three audiobooks I have, and then another audiobook I have is the one for Theft of Swords. It's the same narrator as Red Rising, so I don't know how I feel about that. I think it works better than for Darrow. <laughs> but I can't decide if I need this guy to keep me company for, like, my 10-hour car ride. You know? Can't decide. So those are kind of the audiobook options. Oh, and I also have The Surviving Sky, but I don't think I want to listen to that on audio, but I, I do have it. So those are, like, what I have checked out from the library. And... If it's anything like my normal road trips, like, I'll listen to an audiobook for a fair amount of time, but, like, I need to stay awake, and sometimes audiobooks aren't, just, they just don't do it. Sometimes I need to blast the music that you sing along to. Sometimes I listen to a podcast. Sometimes I just call people and talk on the phone. The rule is whatever keeps me awake, because <laughs> it's a fairly boring drive. I'm, I get on one highway, and I stay on it for nine plus hours. <laughs> I mean, it's an easy drive, but, but it's a long, boring drive. So yeah, those are my audiobook options. And physically reading, I don't know what to do. Like, as I'm recording this, it's Iron Flame Day, which I, I don't want to spend $15 on an ebook. It seems atrocious. It's an ebook. You don't even physically own it. You know, like that's only $3 cheaper than buying the hardback off of Amazon. And I don't want the hardback. Like, that's not a thing I want. And so I'm like, and I put in a hold at the library a while ago, but I'm still like 14 weeks waiting. And so I think I'll be okay unless, so the fantasy romance that I do have on deck on my Kindle is the Serpent Wing book, this one, that would help me towards the Goodreads Choice Award Challenge. I haven't gotten very far in it and I feel like I need to sink into it because like when I travel on my own, I do like to have a fantasy romance and especially when I go home to visit because I sometimes just stay up late and there's nothing better than getting to stay up late and sleeping in and reading a book. So I want a book that makes me want to read. And usually the bingeable books for me are like those romances, fantasy romance. I don't know if this will fit the bill. And if it doesn't, maybe I'll have to buy Iron Flame to fit that bill. Who knows? So that's like popcorn read. And I'm going to continue working on Fool's Quest. I don't think I'd have time for another physical read. Like there's, there's a part of my brain that wants that time. But it's only like a three day weekend for me. Like I only have Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And on those days, I have plans with my mom. And I'm going to go see a movie. So like, I just kind of know that I'm not going to have that infinite amount of time. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I may or may not bring The Surviving Sky with me, which is our sci-fi buddy read. But again, I don't know if I'm really in the mood for that. And like packing wise, I don't know if I want to bring a physical book because I'm trying to pack up a bunch of other stuff. So we'll see. But that's kind of where my reading life is at. It's an okay start to the month. Definitely reading a lot of just okay things, so I feel like I need to pivot to things that are very engaging, because I'm okay with okay things as long as I have great things. And yes, Fool's Quest is pretty good, but I've also, like, was very frustrated yesterday. <laughs> like, I was very frustrated. Like, it was honestly amazing how I went from so frustrated to so happy for catharsis for myself within one reading session of Robin Hobb yesterday. Like, bare minimum, she at least gets emotion out of me, right? So, Yeah. Um, otherwise, like I said, I'm going home. I'm going to go see Captain Marvel because I, superhero burnout does not know this woman, <laughs> does not know me. And it looks fun. I don't know. And it's only like an hour and 40 minutes or something, which I'm, I'm just interested. I'm interested to see what it's like. I, I honestly usually have a good time at the movies. The last time a Marvel movie made me angry was just that Doctor Strange movie. That movie was bad. It was not very good. <laughs> like there was so many ways to make it better. It angers me. All right. Let me know what you're reading, doing, watching this weekend. And um, if you want to just leave an emoji to let me know you're here. Um, oh, I don't know. Leave a car emoji because I have a car drive coming up. And otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.